chapter 16, right? 16, yeah. All right, we should be going live here. Okay, hey, hi everyone, we're live. It is Wednesday. Hi, hi Grace. Hi, hi everybody. I'm so happy to be here and I am excited to dive in. Um, Grace, I'm so happy you're here too. I just, I care about you so tremendously. Also, my dad is back. Um, he wouldn't miss this one, of course. So we are gonna be talking about chapter 16 and I, I really put a lot of thought into um, the kind of, uh, really the direction, because I, I'm sure that you're all feeling like me, that our country just feels a little weird right now and feels a little broken. And so, you know, where do I want to go with this? Um, so I want to share a quick story, regardless of how people think, feel, believe, I wanna share a story I read in the news this morning that made me so grateful to be an American, just so profoundly grateful. And there's a lady named Sarah Higazi. She is gay and she's from Egypt. And she attended a concert a few years back, maybe five years or so, and the front runner of this band is gay. And so she was sitting on the shoulders of someone else and she held up a rainbow flag and the Egyptian officials found out who she was and uh, a friend of hers and found out who she was, arrested her, incarcerated her. She was electrocuted. She was uh, molested. And um, finally, she had some advocates that got her out of that situation and moved to Canada. So she had a lot of trauma and a lot of emotional, um, a, a lot of emotional work to do around that, and she never quite healed. And this week, she took her life. What's interesting about that is that that would not have happened in America. Not the, not the taking or the, the incarceration and and the freedom to sit on someone's shoulders at a concert and hold up your rainbow flag, that wouldn't have happened here. And so I, I, I get that America is broken right now and I get there's still a lot of social injustice and, and inequality and things that we can uh, fight for and advocate for. And yet, here's my dad who was in the Navy for 22 and a half years to defend a person's right to do that sort of thing, whether or not he agrees with that decision. That's what makes America so beautiful. And it's interesting because, of course, when, when Mo penned this chapter, you know, did we have the same kind of, like, I, I kind of, it would have been interesting to go back and actually see what was trending in the news when she wrote this. But her momentum builders at the end, be sure to vote. Voting is a sign of patriotism. It's what true patriots do help renew our political system and our government. It may not be completely broken, but it sure is in need of repair. Be grateful for where you live, the freedoms you have. I'm getting teary-eyed, what in the world? And the opportunities it grants you. Guys, I'm a female business owner and I can build my business as big as I want to. I can go anywhere and do anything with my children that I desire to. I can say almost anything I want to, and I asked Grace to come because Grace is so, so passionate about her country and about the men and women who have fought to give me the ability to do those things. So Grace, thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me here. I mean, you know that I adore you. I, this subject is very close to my heart. And after talking with Mo about, you know, and she graced us with her appearance during Military Appreciation Month. So, you know, we extra love her. And then to have this chapter. So thank you so much, Missy. Thank you so much for the opportunity. 
Well, I wanted to ask, uh, what was your biggest takeaway from this, from this particular chapter? Do you know, I think that the biggest takeaway for me is what I've preached to my kids. Like I, I still have a picture of when we were all eligible to vote at the same time, you know, when the baby turned 18, because I think that that is, that is what like my husband, your dad, everybody else has fought for this country for the, for the ability for us to be able to express who we want in leadership who we want to lead our country, and without the fear of bloodshed. I mean, really, how many countries can, I mean, change, no matter if you change from red to blue, blue to red, or whatever, you know, party affiliation, it's going to be peaceful. It's going to be a peaceful transition. So I think that that is the biggest takeaway from that chapter and something that I've preached to my kids, and I hope everybody, everybody exercises that right. Go vote just go vote. And you see, I mean, here in Georgia, we're having these big issues with lines that are so long, um, with voting machines that are broken. You still need to make that effort because if you don't, why, why are you going to complain afterwards? If you don't take that step to go out and take care of your ability to make a change in this country or keep it. I mean, you know, you may want to keep the current administration. You may want to change or whatever it is, take that opportunity that that was granted to you by people who have served and are serving now. That's yeah. my biggest takeaway. Well, and how many people in other countries would, I mean, what, what, would, what would somebody in another country that isn't allowed to vote, what would they do to have that ability? And it is something I think we take for granted so often to have our voice heard and to, to be able to make yes. it. Yeah. Yes. Especially the younger generation, you know, that's why, like I said, I mean, I use my kids as an example because that's, you know, who I've been able to lead, I hope, is I've preached to them every, every single time that there is the ability to do that is that's your right. That's what your dad fought for, your grandfather fought for, you guys need to go and, and just go do it. Well, talk to me a little bit. Um, I, I definitely want to dive into more of the book and yet what I really want to highlight today is first of all I see Marn in your background so I want yes. to know a little bit about that and then I want to talk about this program that you're doing with Mo and how we can help. So talk to me about Marn. So Marn came out of you know my want to have military spouses and military veterans as one a cohesive group. You know, on Facebook, we probably have 10,000 groups here and there or whatever. Well, I didn't see a military veteran and military spouse group that was really cohesive, that wanted to make a change together. Because as a military spouse, I feel that um, a family unit is very important. Like my husband could not have gone out to do his duties, knowing that I was not at home taking care of the household. So for me, I think that it's a family unit that makes a difference. It gives um, our fighting men and women the strength to go out and do what they have to do, knowing that at home, things are being taken care of. So it was really, really, really important for me to grab both segments of that society, right? Military spouses and military veteran agents. So, I mean, that, that was the beginning. So we have, it's, it's very important for me to keep that. Then we also looked at and thought, you know, there are a lot of people who are patriots who have not served, who really, really love the military, like Mo. I mean, who respect the military for whatever reason that, you know, they didn't serve, their husbands didn't serve, doesn't um, mean that they're not equally as important in our eyes. So Mart has now become uh, patriots, military spouses, and military veterans, all with the single focus of increasing military home ownership, increasing the military agent, um, knowledge of VA loans, of best procedures, of uh, how to help PCS. I mean, all of these things that we can bring together as a knowledge base, that's what MARN is. So I encourage anybody who's listening that wants to be part of MARN, you know, just go look for us. It's, mil it's called MARN, M-A-R-N, Military Agent Resource Network. I would love to welcome you to our group. So Grace, what's interesting is you are known as, at least I, uh, before I knew you well, I knew you were the military chick. <laughs> <laughs> so how has your work in that, like what, what led from 
um, the opportunities that you've created in your world with Marn, what led to that opportunity with Mo? And then tell me more about that. My opportunities with Mo, I'm sorry, you blink, blinked out a little bit. Sorry, opportunity with Mo and the program that you're now working on with Mo. How oh, yes. Tell me a little about this journey while I get some popcorn and yeah. Well, I have to tell you that the very beginning of this journey was, you know, I've surrounded myself with some really great leaders. Among them is Ernie Gonzalez and his wife Leah. Well, they were very, very instrumental in us, um, the Martin leadership, being able to have the very first Keller Williams family reunion breakout session just on veterans. So that was like, like a big aha moment for a lot of people. And I happened to meet Mo one-on-one -on -one right after Lady Leaders. So we walked, you know, together, we talked a little bit and I told her about how glad I was that we were able to do this um, at Family Reunion. I mean, finally recognizing the importance of the military family, the military agent, the military spouse. So we kind of started talking a little bit about it. And you know, Mo, I mean, she's very focused she's very visionary so when i proposed to her that she come on and talk to us a little bit you know about her love of the country because obviously her book is very important to me to my heart i mean because i love mo anderson and um she agreed we kind of started brainstorming and we recognized the fact that military kids growing up in a military family is much different than growing up in you know a family that stays put for you know from the time they're in elementary school to the time they graduate high school and go off to college. Military kids move around a lot, right? And they're, the, the stresses that they feel when their family, you know, PCS is somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. It's something that I think that we need to address. So Mo said, obviously, given Keller Williams kids can, she said, my vision is to have Brandy look at um, maybe, having a special program for military kids to get them together because their, their leadership opportunities should be um, in focus, but also kind of highlight the fact that they may have some different stresses, some different ambitions, you know, because of their background. So that started to be thinking, I thought, well, what can we do? Because when Mo says something, there's no way that we're not going to do it. Right. I mean, she said, my vision is, and I said, Oh, that's, figure out how we can do this. So we kind of started brainstorming what is the best way to get a Keller Williams Kids can campaign going to allow these military kids to take part in Quantum Leap or take part in any other kind of Keller Williams training that is available for, you know, the young leaders coming up, the young, the young leaders coming up, the, you know, not for the little kids, but the young leaders. So with that, um, in another group that I lead, which is Go-Givers, Brittany and Brittany Stewart and Sheena Sadam and I had this beautiful young woman who dresses up as Queen Elsa. She happens to be a lender in Boston who dresses up as Queen Elsa and does story time as a fundraiser. So I thought, you know what, what a better segue to lead this with something really, really fun in order for us to um, get uh, Mo's vision going, which is a KW Kids Can military edition. So I approached her and she is just frankly adorable. You see her video on you know, your page. She's just as cute as can be. So that's, that's the first step. That is the first step that we're doing to ensure that this happens for Mo. And I just got this, this, and then I also got the sweetest email from Mo because she saw it and she's like, this is, this lady is so adorable. She's so amazing. And um, we just can't wait to see what happens with that. So what is your vision? In, because we know how Mo rolls. It might be Mo's vision but now it's your job. I know, I know, I know. So what I, I foresee, and I, and I talked to Brandy about it, right? Brandy from KW, um, who actually runs KW Kids Care. So we had kind of like brainstormed a little bit about it. And I think for now, I think we want to raise money for scholarships for opportunities that we can distribute to military kids and start at MARN, you know, say, tell the agents in MARN, how many of you have a military kid, know of a military kid that can really, really use, you know, 
two days with Gary Keller. I mean, can you imagine the momentum these 18 year olds would have? I mean, I just can't even, I mean, in my brain think of how we can change their lives with that. That's a very first thing. There's also another thing that we're working on that I'm gonna discuss here in a little bit that um, because Mo is very, I, I think it, we you know talking to her, she's very vision oriented. And she said, this is what I want. But you're right, Missy, now it's up to us. I mean, she's a vision caster. We're the ones that make it happen. So there's another couple of things that we're working on, um, given what she told us to do during that webinar. Would you like oh, to hear it? Um, Dana asks, I love this, Grace. How can I help? So how can we help? Well, it, and I have to tell you, I mean, I want everybody to share the Queen Elsa um, campaign when we restarted and um, bad on me we have had to reschedule that because unfortunately I had scheduled it for June 19th not realizing in this um, and I apologize to everybody not realizing in in what we're going through now Juneteenth is actually a very important holiday for African Americans and it is the first year I mean we saw Josh team's email I mean, this is the first year that um, International is actually going to make this a paid holiday from now on. And so I apologize to everybody. I did not realize that June 19th had that significance. So I've talked to Queen Elsa, and so we're going to reschedule that. And we've talked to people who already um, have signed up, and we're just going to reschedule and move forward. But when that link comes back out, um, I would love, Dana, for you to help. I mean, it just spread the word. It's the cutest thing. You know, she does 45 minutes of story time singing, all dressed up, talks to kids. But what a, what a wonderful way to raise, like, she's only charging $5 per kid. So what a wonderful way to raise some money, have some fun, and help the next generation of leaders. This sounds like something that would be really neat to email out to our, our spheres as well. Yes, yes. Yes, I think that it would be amazing. I yeah. think it's going to be amazing. So um, thinking like maybe five years down the road, where do you think uh, or where do you intend for this to end up with the KW Kids Camp for military? Well, I think, I, I think that this is just the beginning, but I think it's also the beginning of Keller Williams recognizing the military family and the military spouses and military veterans. Um, I think it's just the beginning. Like I said, I, mean, I can't even put my brain around that we were the very first ones to have a breakout session when we're in a very important part of Keller Williams, right? And the unique challenges and VA loans and how you PCS and all this stuff. I think that was a, I think it was a very important step. So it's not only KW Kids Can. We're hoping to have in every market center, which Mo also said on that webinar, in every market center, have at least one person who is going to help with military issues, whether it's helping your fellow uh, military spouse agent who happens to be her husband's deployed and maybe she needs her, her lawn mode or a night out with the girls. I mean, I think as Keller Williams leaders, um, we need to be aware of who is in our market center who is struggling with this, right? Because a lot of times, I mean, we, our market centers are spread out. I don't know about anybody else's if everybody comes to the office. I know we don't. I mean, we, there's not a lot of people that are in the office all the time. You know, we, a lot of us office from home or office in different business centers. So I think it's very important that we put out something and we're working on this. You guys are the first to know something that allows our ALC or committee members to have like one person assigned to let's, let's see what we can do to who is a military spouse or military agent. What special needs do they have? As, as your father can probably attest to, our military veterans a lot of times come with very special, um, unique challenges. You know, a lot of PT, I, I mean, and I hate to say PTSD, but I mean, really, there are some challenges that we have. Not everybody can be in a big room with a ton of people because it's stressful. Not everybody can, you know, go celebrate the 4th of July because of the sound. So we need to be aware in our market centers uh, if there is a, a retired veteran, if there is a military, an active military spouse, I mean, all of these things, I think it's incumbent upon us now that we're being recognized to say, okay, 
we need to be able to lead better. The, the military community is very important to our country. It's very important to Keller Williams and how can we help? And I think because of Mo and because the challenges that she's put forth for us to, um, to take care of, I think Martin is gonna be in the forefront of doing all of this. Oh, so fantastic. I know I saw the other day and I, it, this had never really occur, occurred to me. I know that I've seen a lot of veteran agents and she questioned, um, what, maybe a month or so ago, like what special gifts do you see that someone who is former military might have in going, you know, like what roles would they take on in real estate? And I thought about that and man, they really are just wired to do this so well. Yes. Yes. I mean, you can probably see what your, what your dad's training was, right? You give him a, a challenge like this. I mean, it's going to be done. I mean, there's no him hawing or, you know, let's take, I mean, it is done. So I think the opera and for military spouses too, when you're in charge of, I mean, so much stuff going on in your world to transition to be a military real estate agent or a real estate agent in general is not going to be that hard. I mean, she's already used to delegating, to making decisions, to, I mean, all the stuff that makes a military family great, right? I love it, Grace. And I, I see and I hear your passion. I absolutely love it. So um, I'm going to open it up. We've got about five minutes left. Um, guys, what are your thoughts, takeaways? What questions do you have for Grace? Kathleen has her hand raised. Okay. Unmute yourself. There you go. I don't hear you, but you're unmuted. <laughs> Let me uh, change my video settings here. Hold on. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I have to sit up. Yep. So Grace, I love what you're doing and it's kind of um, near and dear to my heart as well. And I was just thinking about this the other day when I was talking to my nephew who's being deployed to Alaska. He's an officer. And my brother has raised three kids that are all three are in the Air Force and are officers. And um, my other niece is a doctor and an officer and moved to Ohio. And they go through so many different emotions um, in the military moving around and, and adjustments. And the quality of leadership skills that they already have, because I'm reading for it, um, they're already disciplined in their thinking, most of them, because they have to be, right? They've, they've, they've mastered boot camp. They've mastered... Um, change and adapting. So what a great opportunity for Quantum Leap to then just really have, you know, the whole teaching of Quantum Leap and gosh, meeting with Gary Keller to excel their thinking. Yes. Um, and they are our future leaders. Like I have many conversations with my nephew and niece. I got goosebumps. I just actually got a, my, my nephew bought a house in Alaska and I called the agents out there and we got the, his first house accepted at 365,000. Um, and he's buying it sight unseen. So it's, it's been enlightening for me to be part of that, but also to see what he's going through. I mean, he's leaving right now and driving 13 hours to move to Alaska by himself. Well, and, and I'll tell you one real quick story that really changed the way I looked at things. Because by the time my kids were growing up, my husband was already out of the military and he was a civilian. Right. Um, but both my boys um, um, did JROTC at their school, which is a junior, I mean, I don't even know what it really is, but it's JROTC, you know, right. where they kind of train them for military stuff. Well, these are a bunch of, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old young men. Uh, one of my boys came home and said that his squad leader, another 17 year old young man, had broken down crying during the middle of their training because his dad was going to be gone again for another nine month deployment. And I said, well, you know, Spencer, what did you do? And he said, you know, everybody just kind of hugged him. And then we prayed for him. Wow. I mean, and that just kind of what 17 year old deserves that, you know, to have to, to be mm -hmm. so upset that your dad's going away again, not knowing if he's going to come back, that now he's right. the man of the family, all these stresses that these young people have that, as, you know, like I said, my kids, um, their father was already out of the military. They did not see that. The additional, not only, you know, being in high school, being in leadership right. in an ROTC position, 
um, having to take care of your family, having to be the man of the house, and then crying in front of your peers. I mean, and what's and what support do they have? Like, what support group do they have to go to? Yeah. So we're hoping at least, you know, in our small part, given the fact that Gary Keller is such an amazing leader and given the fact that our company is so fabulous, that we give them that extra shot that they need, you know, that extra little, mm -hmm. here you go. And can you imagine, I mean, what we are going to see in 20 or 30 years when these mm -hmm. young leaders have like taken all of that stuff and uh, just the change, because I always have believed takes one person to make a change because then you change that person and that person. The ripple. It's the ripple. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that this is just the start, Missy. So thank you for yeah. allowing me to talk too much about this. <laughs> no, I love it. And what I keep thinking about, um, I am wired to be a very strong leader. I'm naturally a leader. And I know that I get that from dad. But as I hear you talk about this, I didn't come into my leadership until three or four years ago. What would have happened if, and, and, you know, we moved every three years. And so I would need to, um, I, I, I never really learned to make my relationships go deep, but I was really good at connecting fast, finding the thing that makes mm, us yep. like, we have this in common and now we're buddies. Um, so I've, I've had all of these gifts and skills and dad, as you hear about this too, what would it have been like if at age 18 or 19, I got to sit in a room with a visionary who taught me all about all of these life skills and the six personal perspectives and, you know, what are you doing with your life and, and who are you surrounding yourself with and all of those things that come out of quantum leap, that it would have had a profound impact on me. Right. And I don't regret that I, I came into leadership later in life. And yet, how can we get these children there faster? Right. I, I love this. I'm all in. Shut up and take Yay. my own. Hey, Grace, I used to teach um, high school. So my brother lived in Italy. He was a captain in the Air Force. I moved to Italy for a year and a half, and I taught school. Um, I had my degree in teaching, and I taught on the military um, San Vito Air Force Base. And uh, it was a tough, tough teaching experience because teaching officer kids versus enlisted are two different animals. And... Like, it gives me chills to think if they would have had this, like you said, Missy, guidance and tools to think bigger and to cast visions um, where some of them would have ended up or the potential opportunities are huge. Yes, yes. And Missy, I'm so glad to meet uh, Master Chief Brown so that we can uh, pick his brain if we need to, because really, I mean, it's, it's his generation of men that can help us grow the next generation of leaders also. Well, Grace, I'm happy to connect you with my dad. Um, he's an avid texter and caller and Yay. he's on FaceTime. So um, I know that he would, uh, he would, so truthfully speaking, right? There are times where I wonder if my dad feels needed anymore because he was this, uh, you know, uh, career uh, master chief and decorated and uh, lauded, respected, all of those things and then retirement and then he had a corporate job for a while and then retirement again. And I think, I think that it would be nice. Yes. Because I, I think that our, especially our veterans in his age bracket just have yes. so much to offer that we're not tapping into. Absolutely. Absolutely. So your daughter's already like tapped you on the shoulder, dad. So we're going to be connecting. <laughs> Dad, you can unmute yourself. And then, then uh, Grace, after um, this exchange, I'll come back to you and we'll close out. Yes. Dad? Anything I can do to help, Grace? Well, I'm going to take you at your word, Master Chief. So we're going to connect. My word is my bond. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Missy, for that connection. Grace, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited, not just about this connection now personally. I'm I'm finding some tears here. Um, thank you for everything that you're doing to be a leader and make change. And um, I love that you say how much you love Mo. Grace, I see her in you so much. Thank oh gosh, Missy, okay. <laughs> That's gonna make me cry. <laughs> thank you for being a leader and um, leading us by serving us. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye, Grace. Great job. Bye.